What happens when your darkest fantasies burst out of your head and out into reality? Hey everybody, welcome back to Crime Over Cocktails. I am Tiffany, your host, and boy, oh boy, have I missed all of you guys. So if you didn't see on my Patreon or Instagram page, the reason why I went silent for two weeks is because instead of Tiffany, I sounded like Tim. I barely had a voice, and when I did, it was quite manly. I wasn't sure if that would be as popular, so instead I decided to get better, so you get me again. But I have missed you guys, and I have missed my alcohol. Today's episode, I will be drinking my vodka and mio. Shocker. We're going to cover the case of Jerry Henry Brutos. Jerry was born January 31st, 1939 in Webster, South Dakota. He was the second son that was born to his parents. They had a son, Larry, and they actually never planned on having any more children. When his mom discovered that she was pregnant, she kind of hoped that it was a girl. Since you know, they already had Larry. She was like, okay, well, I wasn't expecting another child, but maybe this one will be a girl. Well, that wasn't the case. And unfortunately, it seemed like his mother, she didn't really try to hide the fact that she wasn't happy with another son. She was overbearing and very controlling to Jerry. According to his Wikipedia, his mother, she not only abused him physically, but she also abused him emotionally. She would pick on him and call him names. By the age of five, he had already developed a strange shoe obsession, which would also grow into an underwear fetish as well. He took a trip to the junkyard and he found a pair of stilettos. He just thought they were the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. He knew that his mother would obviously not approve of him having stilettos, so he snuck them into the house. But it wasn't long until his mother had caught him standing in front of a mirror. So needless to say, mom freaked out and she actually ended up burning the shoes. She didn't just throw them away. She set them suckers on fire. In the first grade, he was caught trying to steal the shoes of one of his teachers. He also got caught stealing underwear from his neighbors. He was so young and already creating his own secret stash of trophies. It's crazy. His parents decided they needed to do something. So they put him in a psychiatric hospital doing psychotherapy, going to counseling. And he was honest with them. He would tell them that he had fantasies of kidnapping girls and keeping them in freezers. But I guess they thought it was like growing pains because, yeah, you know, that's a normal thought process. But they released him. And as he got older, his obsessions just grew stronger and stronger, which ended up resulting in him stalking various women. He would run up on women just walking down the street, knock them down, choke them until they would go unconscious. Then he would take their shoes and take off. He'd run away. In 1956, at the age of 17, he was put into an Oregon State Hospital psychiatric ward. This was brought on because he had abducted, beat, and threatened another young woman. He was there for nine months. He went to counseling, group therapy. He got a psychiatric evaluation. This is how they were able to find out what was causing him to act this way. What would make such a young kid turn into such a maniac? They knew that all this, it had to stem from somewhere. So, you know, they, they got to go through your life. What happened? Tell us about events that you think triggered. And one of the things that they realized is that shoes reminded Jerry of the hatred he had for his mother which had morphed into a hatred for women in general. He was also diagnosed with schizophrenia. When his nine months were up, 
He went back to school. He was able to walk with his class. He even got married to a young woman named Darcy and went on to become an electronics technician. In 1961, at the age of 22, they were living together, happily married. Everything was good. He would ask her if she would clean the home while wearing nothing more than heels. So I think to no surprise that they ended up having two children together. Jerry would go through different phases. He went through a phase where he liked to dress up like a transvestite and he'd go and walk the streets. Turns out that was a form of disguise to help him escape from stealing random women's shoes. Because when he's attacking them, they're going to think it's a woman and be like, some woman just robbed me for my shoes. Well, no, it was Jerry. This obsession would lead Jerry down a very dark path. He would later on be convicted of four counts of murder and two counts of attempted murder. All from the years between 1968 and 1969. In May of 1969 is when two of his victims' bodies were found in the Long Tom River, which is a 57-mile tributary of the Willamette River in West Oregon. What ended up being his downfall is when, after they found the bodies, police went to the local university campus asking around to see if anyone has seen anything or anyone suspicious. One of the girls that police talked to actually named Jerry. She thought of him because he kept contacting her on several occasions asking her out on a date and she found him weird and creepy. So she thought, you guys need to look into this guy. She gave the police his phone number and they gave him a call. When police contacted Jerry, he initially gave them the wrong address. Police saw this as a red flag right off the bat. Like, like they're not going to find you. (laughs) Like, are you kidding me? So, I mean, of course they do. They find him. And when they walked into his garage, they were shocked. They stumbled on copper wire and the same tool that would have been needed to cut the cords that were used to tie both Linda Saley and Karen Sprinkler's bodies that were found in the river. Right then and there, they arrest him and take him down to the station. He confessed right away. He was like, all right, what do you want to know? He showed no remorse, and he just blamed his mother for ruining his life. He blamed it on her abuse, saying that that's what caused him to be the monster that he became. Linda Slauson was 19, a door-to-door encyclopedia saleswoman who knocked on Jerry's door on January 26th of 1968. Jerry lured her into the basement while his mother and children were in the house. He knocked her out with a wooden plank and strangled her. He ended up dressing her in different female undergarments and shoes that he had stolen from other women. He then arranged her body in many different provocative poses and then used a hacksaw to cut off her left foot, which he ended up keeping in his freezer. And the reason why he did this is he used that to model his collection of high heel shoes. He later disposed of her body in the Willamette River. Jan Susan Whitney, who was 23, she broke down on the side of Interstate 5 between Salem and Albany on November 26, 1968. Jerry stopped and he offered to drive her back to his house with the excuse of letting her call a tow truck there. They didn't even make it to the house before he strangled her with a leather strap and raped her. They discovered that the rape was post-mortem. Even creepier is he kept the body hanging from a pulley in his garage for several days. This is when he dressed her, photographed her, and had sex over and over again. Jerry cut off one of her breasts and made a resin mold of it. He used that as a paperweight. How fucking sick do you have to be? After he tied her body to a piece of railroad iron and threw it in the Willamette River, along with Linda Slauson's foot, which by that time had rotted. Karen Sprinkler, 18. She was abducted at gunpoint from a parking lot outside a department store on March 27, 1969. 
When he attacked Karen, he was actually dressed as a woman. He brought her back to his garage, made her try on his collection of undergarments and pose while he photographed her. He raped her and then strangled her by hanging her by her neck from a pulley. He had sex with her body on several occasions and cut off her breast to make plastic molds. Afterward, he tied the body to a six-cylinder car engine with nylon cord and threw it in the Willamette River. Sharon Wood, 24, he attempted to abduct her at gunpoint from the basement floor of a parking garage in Portland on April 21st of 1969. She was able to get away. Gloria Jean Smith, 15, he attempted to abduct her on April 22nd, 1969. Linda Saley, 22, she was abducted from a shopping mall parking lot on April 23rd, 1969. Jerry had brought her back to his garage where he raped and strangled her and played with her corpse. He decided not to cut her breasts off because they were too pink. And instead, he drove an electrical current through the body in an attempt to make it jump which failed. Afterward, he tied the body to a car transmission with a nylon cord and threw it in the Willamette River. That is some sick shit. I'm sorry. You're making molds out of breasts. You're, you cut off a foot for a display case. Like, I cannot. This is shit you see in horror movies. And I actually think there's people out there that do it. That is just frightening. And these people need off the streets, like, yesterday. On June 28th, 1969, Jerry pled guilty to three counts of first-degree murder for the murders of Karen Sprinkler, Jan Susan Whitney, and Linda Saley. Even though he pled guilty to the murder of Linda, he was never tried or convicted. In the end, he still ended up with three consecutive terms of life in prison at Oregon State Penitentiary. A month after his conviction, police was finally able to locate the body of Jan Susan Whitney, which ended up being a mile downstream from where he said he had disposed of it. While Jerry was in jail, he would contact major companies asking them for shoe catalogs. He said it was his substitution for porn. On March 28, 2006, after 37 years of being incarcerated, Jerry died from liver cancer. He was the longest incarcerated inmate in Oregon Department of Corrections. My question is, no one else used this garage? Like, did you have it boarded up? I don't understand. How do you have a wife and two children in the home? Nobody else goes in the garage? And you got women hanging from pulleys, body parts and freezers, molds. I mean, ah, that shit's just like next level. I, I can't. I always wonder about the wife and st- like, how do you wrap your head around that? I'm just happy he got caught. Lord knows how long this would have gone on for. This was an obsession that he couldn't even control. He had to keep doing these things. So if he wouldn't have been arrested, there's no way in hell he could have stopped. Doctors should have taken him seriously when he was young. I understand people go through growing pains and people say shit sometimes you don't mean. But somebody that young with stuff like that, you got to realize there's there's a screw loose there. A wire's been cut and you got to monitor these people. If you're going to let them back out, that that's fine. If you think they can handle it, but you, ah, it's just so hard to say. And men think women have shoe issues. Hello. And that is the case of Jerry Brutos. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget while you are, please like, follow, subscribe, leave a five-star review on Apple. I would really appreciate it. Word of mouth, I can see it is doing wonders. I really appreciate it, guys. You have no idea. All I want to do is bring awareness to things that are happening in the world. Maybe try to make a difference. And if not, at least I can say I tried. That's what it's about. So many things need to be changed in the system. It's ridiculous. But it's got to start somewhere. And enough people are fed up. It's about time we actually stand together and demand the changes. It's possible. States are doing it little by little, one by one. But we need to make it universal. Let's all get on the same page. 
If you haven't headed over to crimeovercocktails.com, you should. You can listen to the episodes on there. You can check out the merch or you can become a patron and help support the show. Other forms of helping the show is Cash App and PayPal, which is Crime Over Cocktails with two S's. All right, you guys, we'll talk crime another time. Bye.